hardest part for me has been just starting to study because I haven't done an ounce at all. I've kind of just taken um, this spring semester. So I graduated in December um, early, hoping that I could take these next few months to just solely dedicate to the LSAT. Um, but like I said, it's been slow. Understood. So what, what do you think is the hardest part for you in terms of getting started? What's holding you back? I think that I want to go about this in the most efficient way possible. And I know that sometimes I spend a lot of time on planning and kind of like making a to-do list. I like making the lists, but when it comes to actually crossing it off, that's the hard part for me. So instead of but then again, knowing the format of this test is really helpful. Um, I like seeing the bigger picture and then dissecting one by one. But I think that I just have absolutely no familiarity with the LSAT in general. And it's easy for me to get really overwhelmed thinking about the sections in general without actually, like I said, I haven't studied at all. So this is just my... I still don't really know a lot. <laughs> understood, understood. So what do you think an efficient plan would look like? I think that I plan to take it in June, if not July. Um, but I also wanted to talk to you about if you think the timing of my exam is important. Like, does it matter if I take the exam? I know earlier is better, um, but also what you're more prepared for is good too. So Ideally, June, maybe July. Um, but what are your thoughts on that? Those are both reasonable targets. Speaking now in February, that gives you four to five months. Assuming no prior knowledge, that's that's fine. That's plenty of time to learn this exam and achieve high, high, your potential on it, really. I mean, I think that at a certain point, having too much time actually be, can become counterproductive. So I wouldn't want to automatically suggest that you go for the fall just to have more time to master it better because it's hard to keep momentum going for that long. I'd say aim for June or July. If you're not where you want to be by that point, you can always go for the fall instead or in addition, and you could still apply at the beginning of the cycle. But I think June and July are good targets for you speaking right now. Okay. And as for a schedule like, what should I kind of, because I've heard five to six hours sometimes is recommended, but also three to four. Um, I'm solely dedicating my time to the LSAT. I don't want to get burnt out. I've listened to a few of your podcasts too. I like to put them on when I drive. Um, but I, I don't want to neglect to study to my fullest, you know, potential on this exam. I want to be able to study more, but also avoid burnout. Right. Well, that's where the efficiency comes in. Yeah. I feel like we didn't really get into that yet. So there's the number of hours per day. And I could say three to four is good. I could say five to six is good. It's about what fits your energy level and your lifestyle. So podcast in the car, that's great. That's efficiency right there, which is cool to see. It's not studying the way doing problems is studying, but it's obviously quite useful to be able to get that information and get that familiarity. So that's one way to fit in some LSAT knowledge. And then when you're at a place where you can sit down and open up Law Hub or open up a book and do some problems or watch some videos in the course or attend some classes, that's all going to help you a great deal. And so getting that variety is important. And so I'd say if you have nothing but time and you're able to devote yourself full time to this, no other obligations, then I tend more towards the five to six hours a day side of things. But that definitely includes attending live classes. That's part of the hours. Don't make your day 10 hours with two hours of podcast, two hours of class, and then another four hours or more of, of studying. That's a lot. Okay. That makes sense. I that, that makes sense because it's all kind of studying. It's all kind of related. And I guess that leads into my next question. I just purchased the Supreme pack with you. How in your eyes can I take the fullest advantage of this pack? What would you recommend doing? Attend as many classes as you can without it becoming overwhelming or tending towards burnout. There are people who attend all of them. 
but you certainly don't need to attend all of them. And if you've already done a lot that day or you're just not feeling it, that's fine. They're recorded. You can always catch them later. Okay, that's good to know. And I can access this all with the website, LSAT Unplugged, correct? Yes, you go right in there and inside the course platform, you've got RSVP links for all the classes. You have all the recordings of the previous ones. So there's plenty to get into there. Okay, awesome. And just for my knowledge, and I guess everyone else's knowledge, um, what would you say is a good score range in order to go to a more prestigious law school? It's a good question. Well, the LSAT's out of 180. Higher is better. So if you want, let's say you wanted a top 14 law school, you would ideally want to be in the top, you'd ideally want to be in the top band in the 170s. So you'd want to be at 170 plus. You could get in with high 160s. And it also depends. Depends on GPA depends on work experience. So, I mean, I can give you the broad strokes of it, but there's plenty of calculators that can help you fill in specifics. Perfect. I think that's pretty much all I, all I wanted to cover for today. I mean, this is a great starting point. I think once I have all the material, I just need to hit purchase on all the things I need to get for the old tests. And then I guess just start. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. And show up to class. We've got tons of classes going on every week and We've got reading comp tonight and the group coaching mastermind tonight. I'd love to have you there. Okay, perfect. I'll see you then then. Thank you very much for meeting with me. Yeah, of course. My pleasure. Have a good one. I'll see you soon. You too. Bye-bye. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.